Welcome to Holly Terminator X Training Part 16. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at our startup enrichments. Our startup enrichments are things like our cranking fuel and our after start fuel. Our cranking fuel is used to allow the engine to crank up and fire and run. The after start is used for the first 5 to 20 seconds after the engine's fired off to allow stable combustion. We're going to learn how we work with both of these different types of startup enrichments, and then we're going to go and make sure we take a look at some log data so we can distinguish what to look for in a data log when we're trying to dial in and tune both the cranking fuel and startup enrichment. We're going to have a lot to cover. Let's jump into our video so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at working with our cranking and after start fuel within our Terminator X software. These are going to be needed in order to get the engine to fire up and run properly in whether it's cold or hot conditions. Let's break this down so we understand exactly how to program our cranking enrichment and after start fuel so we get the proper results to get our engine to fire up and running. What we're going to do here is jump up here to the top under our fuel ICF. We we'll click on this icon. We're going to be moving into our left pane. We'll find that right now we have our base fuel table that's been loaded. That's already um, something that we've talked about here pretty extensively up to this point in the training course. We're going to be moving from our base fuel table and go down here under startup enrichment. When we click this, we're going to find that we have our cranking fuel table and our after start fuel tables. So the cranking fuel table, that's used when the engine's cranking up and is trying to fire. Generally below 350 RPMs, it'll be into its cranking fuel mode. Then when we exceed 350 to 400 RPMs, it'll move into its normal runtime mode where it's going to consider the engine to be fired up and running. It'll exit our cranking fuel table. It'll go into our after start enrichment. And we'll move here from our cranking fuel into after start. Now the after start enrichment is going to be applying a percentage of fuel multiplier that's going to be increasing our injector pulse width momentarily against whatever calculates from our base fuel table. So whether we're going to be in a volumetric efficiency strategy here or we're going to be in the fuel flow rate speed density strategy, this ultimately gets turned into an injector pulse width. That's going to be how long the injector is open for to spray the fuel that we need to get the engine to run. We would have worked out our VE table or our speed density fuel flow rate table already. So we want to take a look at our after start enrichment after we've tuned our VE table. If we jump back in here to our startup enrichment, again we'll find that this is a percentage multiplier against whatever that calculated pulse width is coming from our main table when the engine fires off and runs. Now this is going to be again in terms of percentage. So if we have a value here of 100 in our after start enrichment, that means that we have no modifier. There's no after start enrichment being applied. If we have a value of something like 130, that means we're adding 30% enrichment against the injector pulse width that's calculated and it's only again adding it for a brief period of time that we can specify in our after start decay rate table. So we can see this table here is going to be the time. This is how quickly it dissipates the percentage fuel that it's adding against the main fuel table value that it's calculating for injector pulse width. So that should be very clear of how this is going to work. So after start enrichment is used to stabilize the engine combustion when the engine fires off. We taper it out over a certain period of time. Now we're going to notice here, we're going to notice a trend between our cranking fuel and our after start fuel. If we jump back into our cranking fuel, notice that it's going to be based on our lower axes of coolant temperature. So we have different amounts of fuel. This is going to be our cranking fuel that we specify right here. Different amounts of cranking fuel based on different temperatures the engine's going to be operating at, different coolant temperatures. So on the colder coolant temperatures here, negative 40 to approximately 60, we can see that we have a lot more fuel flow rate added into our table. We can see here there's 47.2 pound per hour. At 60, there's roughly 29.4 pound per hour. When we take a look at our warm engine here, so 160 to approximately 260, notice that the pound per hour of fuel flow rate that's going to be um, trying to be delivered to the injector or through the injector. This is going to be um, going in having much less fuel being delivered into the engine, which is going to be pretty substantial because we don't need as much fuel as we would on a cold engine. We've talked about in the last video, we were looking at our coolant temp correction and we have our air fuel ratio offset. We talked about a, a phenomenon called wall wetting. And that's going to be where the fuel, when it sprays out of the fuel injector on a cold engine, doesn't atomize very well, so the fuel is going to tend to stick to the intake track, the intake walls, to the intake valve. It's going to do whatever it can to not get into the engine because the atomization is poor because the engine isn't up to operating temperature. Once we start to see 160 to 220 degree coolant range, 
the fuel's gonna- Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you wanna see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you wanna go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here, and you don't wanna miss any of the videos we're gonna be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.